So there's actually a reason that we release our videos every Sunday, and that's because we are big believers in the practice of the Holy Sunday Lunch. Sunday lunch in Italy is a pretty big deal. The whole family gets together and they eat a big kind of special meal together. In my experience with Ava's family, uh, it's sort of over the course of the week, everyone's thinking about and planning like what we want to eat for the upcoming Sunday lunch. And it's usually something kind of epic. Maybe it's lasagna, maybe it's cannelloni, maybe it's tortellini, something like that. Something you don't eat every day. Every time I'm asked what I want for the next Sunday lunch, I always have one answer, and it's probably, in the, at least in the south of Italy, the most classic Sunday lunch dish. It sort of sums up the Sunday lunch experience. That dish is ragu. Ragu alla Napolitana, alla Napol... Na Neapolitan style ragu specifically, but no one calls it ragu alla Napolitana. They just call it ragu. Only an outsider would need to specify such a thing. Ava has made ragu on the channel before uh, numerous times, but always in kind of like in a video where she's making something else and she needs some ragu. But we've never done a dedicated video on like how to make ragu alla Napolitana. So that's what we're doing today. It's actually a very easy and simple dish to make but it takes some time, so we need to get started. Ragu is a meat sauce, which means that we need meat to make the ragu. Today, I'm going to use some pork meat and some beef meat. For the pork meat, I'm going to use ribs and some pork belly. Don't be scared of the fat, because we need the fat, otherwise the ragu doesn't taste. For the beef, this time I'm going to use uh, top sirloin. To make the ragu, you don't need the premium cut of meat because this meat will cook for a long time. Like you can use like a uh, round, like a chuck roast, something like that. Absolutely, yes. There are uh, several choices when it comes to choose the meat for the ragu. For example, a person like my mom, she likes to make the ragu just with pork meat. There are other people that, uh, like me, for example, we mix beef and pork. So it's up to you if you want to do just pork, if you want to do beef and pork. For sure, you can't make just beef because that ragu requires pork. If you don't want to use the beef, you can replace the beef with, for example, pork sirloin, you know, like my mom does with pork skin. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's the most your mom thing ever. <laughs> I know, but believe me, it's pretty amazing. I know. <laughs> One thing that it's very important to keep in mind when you're doing ragola napoletana is that the meat needs to be in big chunk. And this is one of the biggest difference with ragù alla bolognese because we don't want, we will not keep the meat in the ragù, but uh, we will use the meat to release the flavor to our sauce. Another element that is very important for your ragu is the kind of pot that you will use. The best choice with no doubt will be a terracotta pot. But uh, I understand that non, uh, not all of us uh, have a big terracotta pot as we have in Italy. So something like that, uh, a Dutch oven, can do also a very good job. I wouldn't for sure use a very thin pot because you will risk to just burn the meat, the onion, the tomatoes. So use a very heavy and resistant pot. The ragu alla napoletana requires, uh, let's say, a special sofrito because the sofrito is made just with onion. If I were in Italy, I was starting with the onion. But because I'm in America, and in this country sometimes I have a problem with, me, with the meat, which is uh, the meat is full of water. So I will risk to boil the onion and the meat together if I start with the onion and then I have the meat. So what I'm going to do is starting from the meat to let the meat release the water. 
Before Ava gets cooking, I'd like to thank today's video's sponsor, BetterHelp. One of the things I've learned from my Sunday lunch experiences in Italy is that cooking is more than just making sustenance for your body. It's a kind of self-care. It's an expression of love for those around you and for yourself. And as an experience, it can have a big impact on your mental health. Mental health is something that's really important to think about, but perhaps not enough people do, probably because it can be a little daunting to do so. That's where BetterHelp comes in. They make the process of finding a therapist easy and fit into our hectic lifestyles. It's an online platform where you can connect with licensed therapists without any of the normal hassle of making a commute or the lengthy process of finding someone who's right for you. It's really easy. You fill out a questionnaire and usually within 48 hours, you'll be paired with a therapist who meets your needs. I've always known how important and helpful therapy can be, but I never really pursued it because it just seemed so difficult and like such a hassle. I've started using BetterHelp and it's so easy and flexible. I can't imagine doing it any other way. They have a huge network of licensed therapists. And if your therapist isn't working out for you, you can always switch without any additional cost. If you're interested in starting your therapy journey, then visit betterhelp.com slash pastagrammar or click in the link down in the description below. Our viewers will get 10% off their first month of therapy. A big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video and for looking out for our mental well-being. Ragù alla napoletana requires another amazing ingredient, a very important ingredient for southern Italian food, which is lard. You can replace the lard with olive oil, yes, but believe me, the taste will be not the same. Even if I love olive oil, but lard in this case is not required, it's mandatory. I'm going to use some lard, which means two abundant tablespoon. We melt the lard over medium high heat. And at the beginning, your heat should be, as I said, medium high because we want to caramelize the the meat. Don't worry if not all the meat touch the bottom of your pot because you will stir so you will give the meat the space to brown. Right now, all this meat is, is releasing a lot of water. And I can tell just by the sound because instead of having that very nice sound of frying, like it's more like for the water. That is very, very frustrating for a Southern Italian. the meat is browned, what I'm going to do is take the meat out of the pot and add the onion. Now we put back the meat in the pot. This is the best part because this is when it starts to smell amazing in here. I know, but to make smell uh, better, it smells better. I'm going to add some fresh basil. Now is the moment to add some wine. Here you can choose between white wine or red wine. The important is that your wine is a pretty good wine. If you don't drink, a bad wine, you shouldn't cook with a bad wine. Because at the end, it was all in your, in your stomach, in your body. So we are going to a medium low heat because we need, uh, we need to give the time that the wine evaporates, not just the alcohol, but also part of the liquid. But remember, we don't want really to boil the meat in the wine. So it will take about 20 minutes. 
I just need to clarify that Ava just eyeballed that wine, so take that 20 minutes with a big pinch of salt. Depends on how much wine you eyeball into your ragu. You see? So, this is the quantity of wine that you need, though. So sometimes the ragu is something that it can't be measured. Ragu is something that has to do with your feeling, with your love, with your stomach. So you should, uh, I don't know what to say, it's like taste it before you taste it. And just imagine, just dream how it will be in your mouth. There are several dishes, at least in the Italian uh, food world, that they can't be precise. Because precise sometimes is something that belongs to a cold thing that everyone can do. But in order to have your own version, you need to use your feeling, your love. While the red wine is reducing, we can start to prepare our tomatoes. You can use a tomato puree, but because we are making a very good ragu, I suggest to you for a to use for a better quality whole peeled tomatoes. And why? Because you can actually see the tomatoes inside. Okay, right now it's already delicious. <laughs> but we make it better. And we make it better with adding some tomato paste. We need to add some of it. And for some of it, I will use my eyes. <laughs> and now we can add our tomatoes. We put some salt. We reduce the heat and the only thing that we need to do is wait for five hours, no less. Ragu for sure is not a fast food. It requires love, it requires patience, it requires strength also to not eat before it's ready because the smell is amazing. I think that back in the past in Naples when they were making the ragu and they couldn't wait all day for the ragu to be ready, what they did, usually they, every family cooked the ragu and they put outside of the building when there was, how do you say, portiere? Uh, the doorman? The doorman, so because the doorman should be there all the day, they were cooking all the ragu in the patio, in the cortile, yes, of the building, so the doorman could check on all the ragu and the people that could go to work. So, if you have a doorman, let him check on your ragu. Otherwise, uh, you do the ragu like we do now in Italy, which means 5 in the morning, Sunday morning. It has a very shining face. It is the shining face of the happiness. What I'm going to do now is uh, take out the meat. It's very important to understand that when you make a ragu, you have, uh, how can I say, two elements for your lunch or your dinner, which means you are going to use the sauce for the pasta and the meat, it will be your second course. Never put the meat of the ragu with your pasta. The sauce with the pasta, the ragu, the, the meat as second course. So when you see that the meat, in this case of a ribs, is falling out of the bone, this is the moment in which you can take out the meat. One thing that a person should keep in mind when they are preparing ragola napoletana is that actually in that moment they are making something that belongs to the blood of every single, I would say, southern Italian person. It's a moment of, I will use the word religion, <laughs> it's something that uh, 
for us it's so important it means so many things that you're not just making a sauce you are making a ragu that is liquid gold right there see <laughs> i agree Arthur. i agree now we set our meat aside keep cooking the sauce because still now as you can see the sauce is not really thick, enough. thick. it's a little bit too liquid and see you in a little bit it looks like it's time to turn off the heat because as you can see our ragu is thick enough the color is i wouldn't define it as red but more like a deep brownish red so all this makes you understand that uh, your ragu is ready what we do with it use the ragu for your pasta which pasta do you need because don't think that every pasta works with the ragu in napoli the tradition is to eat the ragu with paccheri candele and also egg fresh pasta make a tomma today we are going to cook paccheri okay but just do a small amount because uh we need to save the majority of this for you know what yes i know after you make the pasta what you do with the meat is transfer the meat back in the sauce on a very low heat just to give time to be warm and then you serve the meat as a second course but today i'm not going to put back the meat in the sauce because i need the sauce for something else when you are using a sauce like a ragu that takes a long time to cook and to be reduced and thick what you want to do with your pasta is uh, drain your pasta completely because you don't want to add water to a sauce that you cooked for six hours to, re to make all the water evaporate. While I liberally dust this amazing plate of pasta with some pecorino cheese, you need to settle once and for all, for all the people who write to you asking you, is it sauce or gravy? It's ragu. It's not sauce, it's not gravy, it's ragu. Neither of those words are Italian words. I don't know why people seem to think that Ava will have an opinion on sauce versus gravy. It's ragu. For us it's a ragu. So if you want to solve the problem, call it with its own, its own name, which is ragu. Alpero, buon appetito. Buon appetito. That's love right there. That is love, that is passion, that is patience, that is happiness. Family. That is home, family, that is Napoli. I actually think this is the first time that your ragu has been better than your mom's. Oh. Which is saying a lot. This might be the best ragu you've ever made. Ragu is a matter of love. So for me, can't be better than my mother's one because the love that my mother's put to making her ragu for us is unbeatable for me. So for me, it can't be better. Well, for me, I'm proud to say that my wife's ragu is finally better than my mother-in-law's ragu. <laughs> there is just nothing better than waking up on Sunday morning to the smell of ragu, being woken up by that smell. Sunday morning usually is the day in which you sleep a little bit longer because you don't go to school. But it was like eight in the morning and in my room I start to feel, to smell the sauce. It was like, okay, it's time to wake up also today. <laughs> Because it was so intense and so inviting that you don't want to stay in the bed. And the, the funny thing about this is that, like, yes, it takes a long time to make, 
but it's actually a really simple, easy food. So I just think everyone, well, except maybe like vegetarians, they might have had a hard time with it, but pretty much everyone should try this at some point. It's just too easy to do. And all it takes is one day where you can afford some time to let it really cook. And it's just, it's life-changing. It's more, if you never had, you can't really understand. Yeah. So you need to try it. Well done to understand what ragu is. It's the last one, go. Really? I will give you two seconds. If really? In two seconds, it doesn't disappear. No. I'd offer to cut it in half, but I'm go. pretty sure you'll kill me go. if I cut a piece Bad. of pack cut it in go. half. Go, Oh, that was the best bite, too. Because it was full of... Full of sauce. The other great thing about ragu is that it's not just for pasta. There are a few other things you can do with it. For instance, um, if you saw our recent video, where I made Parmigiana di Melanzane. I like to make it with this instead of tomato sauce. It's amazing. There's another excellent thing you can do with it, and that we are saving for next week. So we will be back. We're gonna put the ragu that Ava just made to use, and we're gonna make another amazing dish that we have made on the channel before, but only in a very cursory manner. So it's time for a deep dive into that one. So stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you try the ragu recipe or any of our recipes, tag us in a picture on Instagram or Facebook at Pasta Grammar. Like this amazing pasta grammarian. Jenna made a beautiful looking Anello di Monaco. Brava, Jenna! Brava, brava, brava. It's the amazing Christmas cake that we were eating this year instead of panettone. All right, guys, we'll see you soon because we have some ragu to use. Ciao. Ciao. Do you think we could spare just a little bit more for one more plate of pasta? No. Just a little bit more? No. Like a no. few spoonfuls more? No, you can make a pasta like also. I'll give you a peperoncino, I don't care.